Hi, it's Kernatex here with the final video in my series about uh, Linux on the Alder Lake architecture. So what I've done is um, run my benchmarks against the recent release of 5.18 version of the kernel. Uh, it was released sometime last week, so it could be that by the time I get this video published, there's the next point version that has been published. Um, I've been playing around with it for the past few days to get these results um, and I've collected all the figures I've gathered um, average them out because I run each benchmark at least three times um, and then I've rounded up the numbers to the nearest second rendered them down as appropriate um, and created this little chart to show the final results now notice um, there's one result missing which is Blender on the earliest kernel version that I ran on this um, Alder Lake system um, and that's because at the time I didn't use this Blender benchmark and when I've come back to boot that kernel it unfortunately hasn't got any graphics drivers for the NVIDIA card which is an I'm now using um, and I didn't want to affect the results by plugging back into the onboard Intel graphics card um, there are no sources available now because I, I removed them they're not available in the Gen 2 repositories so uh, that's why that, that's missing so as I say I, I didn't want to skew the results too much um, by uh, chopping and changing things I've not updated the system at all um, in all these months since I've started publishing these videos which is probably at least a couple of months now um, the only thing I have updated is the kernel as the new versions have come in um, I've ran some tests uh, on each point release that's come up and just chosen you know at any particular time random times to to take these um, benchmarks at these particular times. There's no particular reason why I've chosen 5.16.11. That day I updated that version, I had time to, to run the benchmarks and so on. Uh, so yeah, that's why there's no figure for Blender there. Um, you'll also notice I've got three extra benchmarks I've run. I've, I've automated the commands to build a Linux from scratch system using 11.0 the um, reason why it's not the most recent 11.1 .1 is because obviously I did this um, system, this benchmarking before 11.1 .1 came about. So again, in terms of consistency, I've uh, remained using Linux from scratch 11.0. .0. So basically, I've, as I say, I've automated it and it's split into three different scripts because there's a couple of points where there's some manual intervention needed. So that's why it's in three different parts. Um, this one I could retro um, fit if you like on the older kernel because it is only on the command prompt so there's no problems in uh, running that on the oldest version. So going, looking at the actual results um, you can see generally there's a trend on all of the um, lines in terms of speed so the number of seconds lower is better. Um, there's actually two scales on the um, y coordinates. The right hand scale is for Povre because it runs in under two minutes, generally just over a minute and a half. So you can see on the oldest kernel um, it ran in 700 seconds. Same for the next version I used for 5.14. Then it unusually it, it increased a little bit for 5.15 and then jumped down gradually for the latest version where it, you know it is the fastest time that I got for the uh, most recent version and of course just a reminder that 5.18 was the kernel version that had um, the Windows equivalent of the thread director in Linux it's been called the hardware feedback interface or HFI I've also seen it referred to as the enhanced HFI uh, which is interesting. I'm not sure if there is a difference or not, but uh, mostly in the kernel it's referred to as the HFI or hardware feedback interface. So you can see that it has made a difference for Povray. Uh, Blender figures, again, there's a similar 
bump here for this version of the kernel. I can't really explain why that happened. Um, don't know why. But again, gen generally the um, overall trend is roughly downwards. Um, could argue maybe on average it hasn't changed much for Blender. Um, it's a bit unfortunate I couldn't do this whole kernel because I would certainly expect that to be higher like Povray has been. Um, then I move on to the three um, scripts that I've got for Linux from scratch. And this is what I'm particularly interesting, I, interested in. I don't really do this graphic stuff. I just thought they'd be ideal for parallel processing. Um, in any case, generally, I would have thought that if you're doing processing for graphics type things, you're probably going to be using um, some sort of CUDA device like the NVIDIA graphics card and off offload that sort of work onto there rather than using um, a CPU to be doing that. Uh, so yeah, compiling is probably more akin to what I'll be using this machine for, as I say, so I'm more, more interested in these figures personally. Um, if you look at the first part, you can see again there's a downward trend, the green line. Um, again, there's a little glitch here for this version of the kernel. Um, for the central part, which is the longest running, which is roughly about 11, 12 minutes, again there's a downward trend. Unusually at the end here is a little upward slant, so the compiling that's taking place at this point, which is most, well, it's all of chapter seven of the LFS book and about half of chapter eight. Uh, unusually, it takes a little bit longer than the previous version of 5.17. And likewise, the last part, which is the last half of chap chapter eight, roughly, has a similar thing. I haven't got this little bump here at this version, but again, for the latest 5.18, for some reason, um, it takes a little bit longer than the previous version. So that's interesting to note uh, but yeah generally overall what is what I'd expected to see the um, speed of the system has improved generally for these benchmarks that I've decided to work against um, so that's that I'm not going to show any any of these benchmarks running it's pointless if you've seen me run them in the previous videos um, but what we'll show is just the different um, kernel options that need to be set to enable this hardware feedback interface. Firstly I'll just show that I've still got the cluster scheduler support off which um, seem to gain or garner quite a bit of uh, speed improvement. Um, also want these two options turned on as well. And the bit of magic to get the hardware feedback interface working is under device drivers just scroll down until you come to the thermal drivers and then at the bottom is this option for Intel thermal drivers and the option that you need is this final one here Intel hardware feedback interface and you can see that it describes exactly what it does there um, it mentions about the performance and the energy efficiency capability of each CPU so that's the option to turn on I've also turned on these other options here. I'm not sure if they're absolutely necessary. Um, a couple of these do appear as modules. Um, if I do an LS mod, you can see that um, these ones here appear. They're part of that. And there's these I2C drivers as well. I'm not sure if that's part of that. But so, oh, there's the uh, TCC cooling. That's that's loaded. It doesn't seem to be in use by anything, but it's certainly been loaded. And there's the power clamp one there. Um, so that's the power clamp there and this TCC option here. So it does appear that uh, some of these options are used. As I said, whether they have any impact on the performance of the system, um, I'm not too sure. Uh, it may have an impact on the thermal uh, characteristics of the system and it could be the reason why um, this graph goes up a bit because one thing I have noticed um, when I've been running these benchmarks is the temperature of the CPU has been a lot lower. It was reaching, um, well initially it was reaching temperatures of uh, 100 and it was throttling back until I optimised the BIOS. Um, 
and after that it was below 90 uh, degrees. Since um, this version of the kernel 5.18 and, and those options that I've enabled there, I've noticed that the kernel generally doesn't get much above 80 degrees um, and I haven't seen it go above 85 for um, at all during the benchmark. It might momentarily go up to 85, but it sort of generally hovers around the 80 degree mark when I've been running the benchmark. So it could be that these thermal options in the kernel are making a difference um, by keeping the temperature lower, uh, but also having a knock-on effect, this effect here, where you can see the times for the compile have just increased slightly. So. Um, one thing now I've done all these benchmarks I'm going to do is re-optimize the BIOS. Um, I've got some new paste, some new thermal paste which I'm going to apply to see if that makes a difference. Um, and just generally build up the system so I can finally use it uh, for its intended pur uh, purpose rather than um, just all this benchmarking that I've been doing. So, yeah, that's it. Um, as I say, generally it's been an improvement. Uh, no doubt there will be further improvements, as I say, when I um, rebuild the system hardware-wise, you know, with the thermal compound, I intend possibly to get a new cooling unit for it, um, and I'll be rebuilding the system from scratch, recompiling and everything. So uh, no doubt there will be some further tunes and tweaks to, to be done to get it working at peak performance but as I say for now I didn't want to tune anything else up it was purely about the system itself as I had it when I started taking these benchmarks um, and yeah you can see that there has been a small improvement generally uh, with these figures you can see the figures on the screen they vary from about three percent improvement till I think there's one improvement from um, I think it's I think it's this figure here, the improvements, 15, nearly 15%. Um, so, yeah, it, it varies, like I say, between 3% and 15%. So 3%, you know, it's, it's obviously not that much, but it's, it's noticeable. But 15% is, is significant. So overall, um, yeah, it's been, it's been worth it to, to track this to see what improvements have been made to the kernel. So thanks very much for watching. Um, this series and this video. Uh, if you've enjoyed it and you want to see more from me in the future, um, subscribe to my channel and I appreciate any thumbs up uh, if you've enjoyed watching the videos. Thank you very much. Goodbye.